The other day I had to wake up at 5 in the morning to go fishing with my dad. Why so early? It's not like the fish are swimming around going, Holy mackerel, we're gonna be late for school. No, I think people get up early to go fishing because it takes so long to catch one. But that's because they're going about it all wrong. How can you catch something if you don't chase it? Think about it. A fish is just waiting around to be served a worm on a hook for breakfast? <laughs> well, maybe if it was chocolate. Anyway, my dad says that you need lots of patience to catch a fish, because you've got to be good at sitting down in the same spot for a long time. Hey, so that's what my dad's been doing sitting in front of the TV all these years. He's been training for fishing. It looks even worse upside down, Annie. Oh, joy! Edgar Van Goof is selling his newest masterpiece to my art gallery. Oh, Van Goof's a genius! The father of neo-ultra-pedestrianism. What's a Van Goof? That is a Van Goof. You're right. It is pretty goofy. But what could you know about high-class art? You're just a child. We know enough to get out of here. Ah, you've come to deliver my new masterpiece to the McFony Art Galleries. You are no doubt wondering why I'm agreeing to sell this painting, which is like a part of my soul. Not really. I must share it with the world and get the 50,000 bucks. I could show you the new pair of pants. Whatever. He's gonna get a really nice pair of pants for 50,000 smackers. I'm gonna catch the biggest fish ever with my new rod. Wow, I got a bite already. Oh boy, a flying fish. Yahoo! was some fish. That doesn't look like a fish, but we could use it for a dartboard. A fish is a dartboard? Let's go get some darts. What are those boys hiding? It's just like them to lock their clubhouse when we want to go snooping. So, it's time for the Santa routine. painting. <laughs> Yuck! This is even worse than a Van Goofy. What do we do now? The boys will know someone sneaked in. I'll just paint a new one. There. Now we better get it back to the clubhouse before the fellers find out it's missing. <laughs> what a mess. I guess Lulu's been... Hey. Wow. Lulu is a real artiste. This should hang in the Louvre. Or better yet, on our refrigerator. But first, I'll fix that rip. There. It's beautiful. <laughs> Don't lose hope. I'll stop at nothing to find your masterpiece. You... You will? Money is no object. I'll offer a huge reward. Say, 25 bucks. Those girls, that painting, it looks like... Uh-oh, it's that loony from the gallery. Hey, Lulu's the one who burgled our clubhouse. What's the big idea, Lulu, sneaking in and stealing... <laughs> Where did you get that painting? Um... What painting? That painting! There's a reward. Huh? Oh, 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 oh. My boy, I offered a reward. And I, Elmer McPhony, am a man of my word. Here you go. Fifteen dollars. Wow! Congratulations! 
Congratulations! The hoity-toity of the art world are here to witness the unveiling of your masterpiece! <laughs> Just because he's a genius doesn't excuse him from wearing pants! It was sure nice of Mr. McPhony to invite us to Van Goof's unveiling. I didn't know artists wore veils. I now present the latest masterpiece by that genius of the art world, Edgar Van Goof. But I did not paint this. Oh, burn! Oh, burn! Oh, burn! Oh, burn! Oh, burn! And she didn't even need numbers. That means my painting is still missing. <laughs> I'll never get my money. I'll never buy new pants. Don't cry, mister. I know where your painting is. It's next to my mom's shopping list. Your mother is an artistic genius. It runs in the family. My painting. <laughs> Here, Mr. Van Goof. <laughs> well, at least his masterpiece was good for something. My mother does these amazing exercises with her face in front of the mirror. Because she wants to look younger, she says. Well, I don't know about that. But I think she's forgotten what she always tells me when I make faces. Lulu, if you don't stop, your face will stay that way. Or maybe she does remember, and she's looking for the way she wants her face to stay. <laughs> Ever wonder where babies come from? Well, I decided to find out and ask my mom where I came from. And you know what she said? Go ask your father. <laughs> so I did, and you know what he said? Go ask your mother. I guess they don't remember where I came from. So I asked Tubby, and at least he had an answer. Kinda. He said he's from New Jersey, and how's he supposed to know where I come from? Mrs. Moppet, is Lulu home? Oh, no, no! And a special hello to you, Mr. Moppet. Happy birthday! <gasps> Why, thank you, Tubby. Nice of you to remember. And I hear my little... Lulu? I can't believe it! I forgot Dad's birthday! At least I've got 50 cents, so I can buy him a present. Oops! Fifty cents? You need at least a dollar for a quality present. Phew. I must be able to afford something. Maybe in this swap shop. Like those earrings. Or that hat. about those old roller skates? Hmm. <laughs> Dad's allergic to roller skates. They make him break out in bumps. I know where to get a great present. Gosh, Tubby, thanks. <laughs> the perfect gift. Good old Tubby. I can always count on him. So, what'd you get? Sorry, it started melting. I'm too sad to be mad. I feel sick about this, Lulu. Of course, it could be the ice cream. But I'll make it up to you! Your dad sure has a lot of junk. Hey, this isn't junk. These are all the birthday presents I gave him. Oh boy, just the thing. Dads love these things. Dad hates fish. 
He's always grouchy when we have fish for dinner. Dad loves chocolate mousse, though, so I bet he'd like a real one. It's gone! 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 My fish! Big whip! He's gone! <laughs> I didn't know he liked it so much. Wait to see Dad's face when I give him his present. Go! Oh. Uh, Lulu, where's the fish? I swapped this moose for it. But my dad's going crazy. I gotta get the fish back. Oh! But what about my dad's present? Ow. I don't know about this, Tubby. Your plan sounds kind of fishy to me. Hmm? <gasps> Swap? Please, please. Cheer up, Dad. When Mr. Bubbles gets bigger, you can catch him. Thanks, son, but it just won't be the same. <laughs> <gasps> Dear, come quick. Big Red, you've come back. This calls for a celebration. Your dad may be happy, but what about my dad? Now we make a swap. What do you mean you only had one moose? Happy birthday, Dad! Lulu, sweetheart, I thought you'd forgotten your old dad's birthday. Ow! Oh! It's a genuine, solid iron Civil War cannonball. No kidding, just my luck. Ow! Oh, oh, oh. Everything worked out just fine. Lulu, go! Ah. That's it, Dad. Take the weight off your toe. You deserve it. Huh. Oh. Uh. Ah. Ah. Swap! <laughs> tell you how I caught Big Red? Oh, no. Ah! It's a long story. First, I put the worm on the hook, but not just any worm. Oh, no. Darn that, worm. Tubby. I've got to put a stop to this. Hey! Hey, Tubby! Hey, Ball! Hiya, fellas. Coming! Sorry, Dad. Gotta go. And then Big Red bit. <laughs> Hey, where's my mitt? Lulu! Wait up, Lulu. You took my mitt and swapped it for that cannonball, didn't you? Tubby, how could you say such a thing? I swapped it for two cannonballs. Now I'm all ready for Dad's next birthday. But my mitt, how do I get it back? Easy. Not that fish again. <laughs> Ever been on a long car trip with your parents? Pretty boring, huh? Like, how much fun can a kid have staring at the back of someone's head for eight hours? But if you've got a kid brother, things can get pretty exciting. First, there's the big fight over who gets the window seat. And no matter what your parents say, two kids can still fight over two windows. Or say, Dad! Billy's put his head through the sunroof. And wait to see how long it takes them to realize the car doesn't have a sunroof. Or tell your brother to hit the floor and then ask your parents, how come little Billy didn't get back in the car at the last gas station? Then sit back and enjoy yourself. A long car trip can be fun.
Hey, uh, did you hear about the big bank heist? At 10 o'clock this morning, the first federal bank was robbed. The bank robbers escaped with $10,000. Gosh, bank robbers. Shh, Tabby. Shh, I'm undercover. I'm on lesson three of my detective course, trailing suspicious suspects. You mean the bank robbers? What bank robbers? We repeat, big heist at First Federal. Bank robbers escape with 10,000. Oh boy, a real crime. <gasps> and there's our suspect. Why is he our suspect? Because he's glancing around in a suspicious way. Maybe he's looking both ways before he crosses the street. That's what he wants us to think. Here it is. <clears throat> when suspect has been identified, note details of features, build, and dress. Suspect is a man. Um... Taller than me? Gosh! He just ran into the street at the wrong time. See? Detectives are trained to be very observant. Where'd she go? Come on, that guy is suspicious. I'm gonna go in and get his fingerprints with my official detective fingerprint powder. And you're gonna distract him for me. You can get your fingerprints from the door where he pushed it open. Right. Uh, <laughs> we'll get fresh ones instead. Oops. Sorry, mister. Yeah. Thanks, Sonny. Hey, mister! out the taste of all that expensive fingerprint powder he swallowed. He's only pretending to drink. Here it is. Shoes are a good indicator of where a suspect has been. Look closely for dust and mud. Dust and mud? We're looking for bank robbers, not cowboys. I'm going in for a closer look. You distract him again. Ow! Hmm. Huh? Hey, I don't care why you two are after me, but beat it! Need a hair sample. What? A hair sample. It says here we can match it with one from the scene of the crime. Okay, but I don't know how much hair you lose robbing a bank. Ow! I got the hair, and he was reading the newspaper upside down. Come on, he's leaving the park. Oh, boy, he's a burglar, too. Give me a boost. Gee, it's so dark, I can't see a thing. Tie him up, Stripes. Okay, but after the sock I gave him, I don't even need a... Yikes! Officer McNabb, oh. quick! Some men are tying somebody up in a house! This house, right here! All right, let's go. Shh. Hey. hey! What have we got here? You've got a couple of bank robbers, Officer McNabb. Detective Johnson, what are you doing here? Detective Johnson? I was following this one to their hideout when this one slugged me. But we were following you. Huh? Lulu and Tubby led us to you. Well, I guess I owe you an apology, kids. 
You two are real detectives. Local kids, Lulu Muppet, and Tubby Tompkins were presented with special junior detective badges at City Hall oh. today for their part in the capture of two notorious bank robbers. Look, Tubby, it's Detective Johnson. He's following that lady. I've seen her before. Officer McNabb was following her, too. Taxi! There's no escape, ma'am. We've got you covered. Ah, Detective Lulu, Detective Tubby. I'd like you to meet my mother. Last time it rained, I wanted to go to a movie, but my mom was too busy to take me, so she told me to use my imagination and make my own fun. So I skated around the kitchen floor in my socks playing hockey. I had the puck, I took a shot, and broke a jug. And that's when Mom ran in and threw me out of the game. Then I piled up all the pillows and made believe I was a mountain climber. But an avalanche came down and broke a lamp. And that's when Mom ran in and chased me off the mountain. And then I was a spy on a secret mission, and I hid in the closet and yelled, Gotcha! when my mom opened the door. And that's when Mom lost it and took me to that movie. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Ever notice that grown-ups act pretty weird around babies? First, they get away with doing all kinds of weird things with their faces. I bet if they did that walking down the sidewalk, they'd probably get arrested. But what's even worse is the way grown-ups talk to babies. I once saw a mother lean down into a baby carriage and say, Gootsie, wootsie, snookum, wookums. I looked in and there was this baby just staring up at this lady thinking, I'm sure you're a very nice lady, but you're making no sense at all. So naturally the mother said, How's my sweetie, weedy, poopy, whoopy? Well, if you ask me, if that's how parents speak to their babies, it's no wonder it takes them so long to learn how to talk. dear. Unless your father is sitting on it. Hey! You don't have my doll's wig, do you, Mr. Moppet? I'm used to losing hair, Annie, not finding it. Hmm. This sounds like a job for... The spider can catch your thief, and I even know who it is already. You do? Who? Your dad, of course. He could use some hair. Well, for your information, he doesn't have it. I'll prove he took it. But first, I need a disguise. <laughs> Why couldn't he just get into his disguise at your house, Lulu? That'd be too simple. Just get me into your living room so I can keep an eye on your dad. <sighs> Tubby! Hey! What's going on? My first rescue of a runaway plant. I hope it's the last. <gasps> what? Thanks for saving my plant, Officer McNabb. Lulu, did you know it talks? Sometimes it doesn't stop. Uh, what I meant is that it's a, a, a special, um... Talking Mother's Day gift. Talking Mother's Day gift. Well, that explain. <gasps> Mother's Day? Oh, no. I forgot Mother's Day. <laughs> <sighs> the things I do in the line of duty. Us, too. Uh, Pop, this is a special Mother's Day gift. What a nice plant. Feels dry. It needs some water. Ugh, gosh. I have half a mind to drop this case. 
At least you don't smell like garbage anymore. Here's a new disguise, Tubby. Oh, no. No. Well, I suppose that sometimes on difficult cases, a detective will dress like a lady. And now for the final touch. You look swell, Tubby. <laughs> Your mother's hat was a great idea, Lulu. Your father won't suspect a thing. When we're with my dad, I'll say, there's a mouse under the chair. And I'll search him, find the wig, and solve the case. Oh, no! Mouse! Eek! A mouse! Oh, hey! Don't worry. I'll get it. Get off! <laughs> hey, look out for the... Nice meeting you. Lulu, we really must have a talk about your choice of friends. Sure. Did you find the wig? I don't know. I found a whole bunch of things in his pocket. Say, do you smell smoke? Uh oh. Ouch! Ow! 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 I'm burning! <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Tubby, you ruined my dress <laughs> and my mom's hat. Your father's pipe. Doesn't he know smoking is bad for your health? I don't know what's worse to have in the house, a thief or a detective. Let's get Tubby another disguise. <gasps> I had to customize your dad's clothes, so he'll think I'm a real detective. I think he's going to think something else. Where did you get that hat and coat? That's what I thought he'd think. You have to come down sometime, and I'll be waiting for you. Hey, Lulu, I solved the case. The mother bird must have flown into your room and taken the wig. She made a nest out of it. Gee, Tubby, you really are a good detective. But I guess I can't take the wig back now. Sure you can. Yippee! <gasps> there, case solved. Gee, thanks, Tubby. But what about those little birds? Don't worry about it, Annie. Tubby thought of them, too. Want to play some more hide-and-seek? But if we just play hide. Aren't feet weird? And toes bizarre. Not to mention ugly and... Ugh. Well, you get the point. I mean, you'd think that when they were designing the human body, they could have come up with something better than feet to put on the end. Something more fun. <laughs> like a bike. I finally convinced my parents to take me to the amusement park the other day, and boy, was it great! We ate popcorn, pizza, and pink cotton candy, and then we went on the rumble, the zapper, and the twist. It was so much fun! I guess that's why they call it an amusement park. Funny, my parents didn't look too amused. They just looked sick. liked your lunch, dear. But did you have to bring it home with you? This is the place. They're only a dollar. Funny. All of a sudden, I'm hungry. <laughs> we can share. 
<laughs> what about this one, sweetheart? I do know that it's delicious. Thank you. See, Tubby, this is how you treat a lady. Um, aren't you forgetting something? Your roles, monsieur. <gasps> We don't need to see the menu, because we'll have whatever it is people are eating for a dollar. Ah, the frog legs. <gasps> a marvelous choice. And for your main course? <gasps> Monsieur did not pay for the rolls! <laughs> people eat frog legs? They actually pay for them and eat them, too? I know where they could get their own frogs, and for free. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I bet if we catch lots of frogs, that restaurant will buy them. Then we could pay for the rolls you took. I didn't steal them. Rolls are free at restaurants. Well, this is it. The last time we were here, the swamp was full of frogs. I hope they don't remember that you scared them off with rocks. Oh, frogs are too dumb to... Remember? This might be trickier than we thought. Here I come, Tubby! Shoo, Froggy! Shoo, Froggy! Hey, shake a leg! Shoo! Shoo! Gotcha! Good catch! But don't squeeze him! That's in case he gets hungry. We don't want a frog with skinny legs. <gasps> That's my mother's head box cover. She'll be really mad. <laughs> Listen to that frog croak. I bet he's laughing at us. If I were him, I'd laugh too. Us fellers built a raft last time we came. We could use it to get the hat box cover. And teach those frogs who's boss around this swamp. Those frogs think they're so smart, but we'll get them if we camouflage the raft. Come on! When we get near the frogs, remember to duck into the leaves. I'll help! Now we're cooking! No, we're not! We're sinking! This raft will never sink! Too bad we're not on it. I've had enough of this. I'm getting my hat box cover, and that's it. Darn. No more frog hunting for me. You've got to expect a little trouble, Lulu. You call getting outsmarted by frogs a little trouble? I bet we can still catch some. No way. Wow. Good thing you grabbed those rolls. We got them. I knew this was a good idea. I couldn't help myself. I had to have more of those delicious frog legs. Well, we've got a whole box full you can eat. I think I've had one too many. I wonder where that maitre d' is. This is pretty important. Maybe we should only talk to the maitre a. Ah, Mademoiselle and Monsieur are back for more rolls, I see. Well, they are only free if you eat a meal. You'll be giving us more than free rolls when you see what we've got. We have some frogs here for you. Lots of frogs. Freshly caught frogs with two legs each. Frogs? For me? See? No! Ah! Huh? Huh? And then my boss mm. said, Hey, wait! Yeah. A frog in your throat, dear. Gosh, why is everyone afraid? Where do they think frog legs come from, anyway? Oh, no. Oops. You are responsible. You must get rid of these frogs. <laughs> Please, help me. I'll pay you a nickel apiece to get rid of them. Sure. Wow, there's sure a lot of money in frogs. But I don't 
don't want them to be eaten after all. We should let them go. Okay, Lulu. The frog legs here are better than the last place. Oh, we'll let them go, all right, in this restaurant. Ever think about how some words are really funny when you put them together? Like toilet training. I mean, what would you train a toilet to do? Roll over and fetch? <laughs> Maybe an attack toilet would keep burglars away. But I think a dog would be better and definitely easier to walk. And then there's fly fishing. Not only would the hooks have to be teensy-weensy, but what would you use for bait? And let's not forget baby powder. Do you just add water and presto baby? Well, let me tell you, that's not how it works. I know, because I whipped up a batch with water, and you know what I got? I got yelled at for making a mess. your father is doing? Okay, Mom. What you doing, Dad? I thought you went to buy wood for a new bookshelf. Huh, new wood is too expensive, so I'm using some of these extra floor supports. I need a hand. Could you please ask your mother to come down? Okay. Whoa! Rat! <laughs> On second thought, maybe I will go and buy some wood. I'd sure like to help my dad find that wood he needs. Hey, maybe Tubby and the boys know. They used wood to make their clubhouse. Hiya, fellas! Oh. Ha. Hey, give me back my marble, Iggy. Fellas, can we ask you a question? No. Can't you see we're having a club meeting? It's members only. If we were members, then could we ask you a question? No! no. The day we let girls into the club is the day we move our clubhouse. <laughs> Ow! Now look at what you did. That's why we don't let girls in our club. Fine. Hmm. Lower! Stores will be built on this spot. So they're finally gonna tear down this old building. I think I know where we're going to get some really cheap wood after all. <laughs> this is a great idea. Hey, who put that sign there? Whoever's building stores here. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have to move the clubhouse. To where? There are no other empty lots around anywhere. I think we can trick someone into letting us use their backyard if we let them into the club. Lulu! <laughs> no! But we gotta save the clubhouse. Okay. You're right. Gee. Huh? Say, Lulu, wanna join our club? No. You could be president. You'll be boss, and you can do anything you want. Only if Annie can be a member, too. She said yes, fellers. Old Tubby sure can handle women. Fellers, meet President Lulu. President? Come back after lunch for your first meeting as President Lulu. See you later, boys. Don't worry. She'll have no real say. Oh. Just like a grown-up president. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say, what are you doing? Don't
don't you remember? I said the day we let girls into the club is the day we move the clubhouse. And as president, you get the honor of leading the way. Huh? We'll push. <laughs> Gee, we sure elected a strong president. Fellas, mind if we take a shortcut? How do you know where we're going? Women's intuition. I don't like the sound of that. Ah! Now let's take the real shortcut. Ah! Piggy, go see where we're going. You call that a proper turn signal? Look at that. They're even making cars out of wood. And I can't find enough cheap wood for a lousy bookshelf. Right on time. Great by the time I got finished with you, on. Improper turn, speeding, and taking a policeman's uniform? What is this? A $5 ticket is what it is. Where will we get $5? Right here. I'll buy some of this wood for $5. Thank you. <laughs> This'll do just fine. <laughs> well, I don't like it. You shouldn't have tricked us, Lulu. You said when I was president, I could do anything I want. So, one lump or two? <laughs> Today in class, the nutritionist said, you are what you eat. And you know what? I found out she's right. At lunch in the cafeteria, I saw our nutty science teacher eating nuts. And Biff Bentley, the big school show-off, was eating a hot dog. And then when I got home, my dad was in his usual spot on the sofa watching TV, but he was eating potato chips. And then Mom came in and told him he was a big couch potato. So then I started thinking that being what you eat can come in really handy. Like for my big math test tomorrow. Instead of studying, I asked Mom for something really special for dinner. Brains! Ooh.